It's going to be different, they said. It's going to be awesome, they said. It's going to have improved accuracy in every way, they said. It's, it's going to be for CrossFit, they said. They lied. Hey, what's up? It's a figure hunter, and tonight we're going to talk about the initial testing of the Whoop 4.0. We're going to talk about our testing from here, and I'm going to share about some of the issues I've read about and some of the fixes I'm aware of. So with that, we're going to dive in. So we're going to talk about it in that format. So issues I'm aware of and fixes and things that I'm aware of now. We're going to look at the device in the puck because I really want to talk about the accuracy but we're gonna look at the device in the book because I think people wanna see it. And then last, we're gonna look at the first CrossFit workout. We're gonna compare it to 12 different devices and we're gonna go from there just to really talk about the issues that lay ahead. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. Fit Gear Hunter channel has every you know, testing device for purpose of CrossFit training versus all the biking, running, and swimming videos that are out there. I'm doing a lot of testing going forward. I have the Mazefit GTR3. I'm gonna talk about the accuracy of that relative to the $800 Whoop device, the TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra, and then the Power Labs uh, chest strap and armband, which is Bluetooth and Amp Plus, which I'm fired up about, plus the Garmin Phoenix 6 Solar Mineral Blue Titanium, which I'm just going to show just in a snippet video at some point because I think it's cool because you know not many people have done a video about that. And another thing I'm excited about is that I'm actually going to be partnering with the 5K Runner, uh, 5K.com runner.com to be able to do sort of a co-review so i'm going to refer people to their review in written format and they're going to make notes of my review in video format because i do crossfit and they do running and different types of uh like triathlon type stuff so the 5k runner they are awesome they put out so much content i do not know how fast their keys strokes move that they can continue to get out so much content and I, I think they have jobs and so that's just crazy to me because I just don't have the ability of time for that. But we're gonna partner with some of the things for the WHOOP testing, so I'm fired up about that. And so that's still to come and to evolve and stay tuned for more. So with that, let's dive into the issues I'm aware of with the WHOOP 4.0 before we get into the meat and potatoes of the heart rate. Okay, so what are the issues? Shipping, clearly shipping. Clearly nobody's getting it for another year and a half or half the people get a year and a half. The shipping issues have been significant because you think about when, you know, like last week they said, you know, sorry, they didn't even say sorry really, but they said there's shipping delays, but now it's been updated. So you have correct estimated timeframes. This is like four weeks in after everybody's been sitting around hitting refresh and it just, everybody's continued to say four, five to seven weeks, five to seven weeks. I ordered this in two separate methods. I used a fresh new clean email, fresh new clean account, and then I used an old account because I had tested the 2.0 and the 3.0 and the accuracy was so terrible for actually using it for CrossFit that I didn't want to keep the device and sent them back before the time frame ran out. So I used an old account in a brand new account and I purchased them the same day, the announcement day, and I hit go and after for that refresh date from the email last week one said it's coming in seven days and the other said it's coming in seven to nine weeks or you know something like that i think it was seven to nine weeks so a lot of people are talking about how they hit the refresh button when that announcement came out and it jumped to like nine to eleven weeks i just don't understand how when you make the announcement i mean i have an idea of how systems work and how companies work in some basic ways and I don't understand how you don't know like your company well enough to say how much resin do we need, how much plastic, how much you know steel, where are the heart rate monitors and the production of those. What is the real time frame that you don't know ahead of time when you go to announce this device, how long it's going to take based on estimates of how many people are going to order. And you know you're going to give a device to people that have a six month or longer subscription still left on their plan. So why didn't you know this a long time ago? So that's a big issue. Now the issue is somewhat resolved and resolved in a terrible way. So the answer or the resolution for that issue is, okay, now you know it's gonna be nine to 11 weeks and more than likely they're probably overestimating so that it can actually come in five to seven weeks and you'll feel somewhat happily you know, excited about it. So the other major issue is the battery drain issues that I've heard about. So I read and read it, you know, 23% overnight sleep, major drains during activities. And so I'm going to be testing and tracking all that. But I did call Whoop customer service yesterday to ask about a couple of other sideline things. And I asked about those things specifically. 
And the, the tragic, the, the answer they gave is that there wasn't a clear understanding of the problem yet, or it wasn't clear how the fix was gonna be. But the one recommendation they gave for how to fix the battery drain issue is to let the Whoop go all the way down to 0% and basically reset from a 0% power failure and then charge it back up. Um, so let it run out of juice and then restart it and that should hopefully fix some of the things. Obviously I got two updates today as I unboxed it. So maybe there, I, I do think these are things they're gonna fix, but the other issue is the watch is not on the wrist or some notice people saying it's, it's not detecting that it's on your wrist. And the simple answer for that the way to fix it was to reset the device. So to go through a traditional reset um, to power it back up so that it just sort of refreshes the device. And the other things that I've read about is the time for the puck to charge, the time for the charge to, uh, the puck to charge the whoop and the overall puck holding of the charge. So I'm gonna test all those things, how long it takes for the puck to charge, how long it takes for the ch puck to charge the whoop, uh, how long you know it lasts, and all those different things. But there's no clear answers there. It obviously is not connecting by physical electronic connections, not like metal on metal, so it's doing like a um, magnetic charge. So obviously it's gonna be slower and the puck is small, so it obviously it's not gonna be able to pack in a huge fast power transfer I don't think realistically I think my gut says these the the whoop 4.0 is going to last three to four days realistically is my total blind gut but that's just me taking a guess so I'm going to test all those things I did talk to customer service they did give those tip those tips and so that is what I have for you now on the issues that I'm aware of just so that the public knows the different issues that people have heard of and I'm sure there's more that's just me sort of looking in a few different places so with that, let's look at the hardware itself. So you can just see, you can see the puck. I don't have the 3.0 because obviously I said I turned it, sent it back because it wasn't accurate enough. Um, so I'll show you the puck because I think the puck is cool. I think the band is actually a cool design. The new fabric material is nicer. And uh, just look at the mechanism itself and then we'll come back together to talk about heart rate accuracy. And here you have it, folks. The new puck, the new charger, and the new band. I will say that this new flex weave, I don't know, some name for it, is definitely more comfortable. It does feel more solid and both more comfortable and breathable. So they've really done a good job on increasing the quality of the band. Um, I still have to wrap it considerably around. And the new puck, they say, is 30% smaller than the old puck. Um, that's actually not the most important thing to me because I didn't think it was that cumbersome. But for a lot of people that just wear it just on their wrist as the only device, it is a better, bigger deal. The thing that's most exciting for me, oh, so we'll look at these. So this is the new, I don't know why it needs a power adapter there, really, conversion. So, um, and then this is the wireless charging puck. You can see there's not anything in there to connect it other than the wireless charge there. It is USB-C charging. And it is actually pretty slick. I actually like it. Um, it's just really smooth and slick. But the biggest thing, so the Whoop, you know, snaps in place just like the old Whoop did. It looks basically the same. It's just shorter and thinner. Um, the new device has little diodes across the middle instead of across the edges. So you can see that there. And then Pulse Ox is built into there somewhere. Um, so we'll test all those things going forward. The biggest thing is this right here. You know, the fact that you can just slide it off and then slide it back on. Cause I didn't like putting on a bicep band, obviously in the Whoop 3.0 and 2.0 was just not accurate on the wrist at all, at all, you know, at all whatsoever. Um, so the fact that you can just rotate this out and then obviously you can slide the puck into um, all these new attachments. So there you have that there. And then once you, you know, if you wanna use the puck, you just sort of slide the puck on and it just works, it works fine. You know, I did, it has charged, it has held a charge after this last update that, hit, that did. So maybe that's actually an issue that's gonna be better, but that is the hands-on of the new device and the way it looks. I don't have the other to compare it to, but let's talk a little bit about heart rate accuracy. Heart rate accuracy for a CrossFit workout, the official wearable of CrossFit. So what is CrossFit? I just wanna look at like why heart rate accuracy is so fundamentally important for CrossFit training and CrossFit workouts and CrossFit tracking. Why is it the heart rate accuracy important? And we'll talk about how we're gonna gauge accuracy on this device itself. Because CrossFit is basically pushing yourself to your cardiovascular breaking point or your muscular breaking point over and over again, taking a breather and then coming back. Whether you're breaking up movements so much you like getting to the breaking point of a headstand push-up before it, it, you know you hit your limit 
or it hits the number of reps you're supposed to do and then you go into double unders and then pull-ups or whatever. You have different time periods, a six minute sprint, a 20 minute AMRAP, a 40 minute EMOM, where you're just cycling your heart in different periods. You're doing an EMOM, you're cycling it up for 30 seconds and cooling it down. Where you're doing an AMRAP, you're cycling it up in different ways because maybe you, like, like I said, in headstand push-ups, maybe you kind of are coming to failure so your heart rate is coming down and then you're transitioning to double unders where your heart rate just basically spikes back up. So you're cycling your heart to different things. And so what do we see over and over in the heart rate? And then as an evaluation of exertion, how much your body is, is impacted by the workout is you see high intensity level and then changes in intensity level. So the only things, whether it's a, a spike and a drop, whether it's a sort of a intent, like a spike and a cycle through its spikes, or whether it's a spike and just sort of maintaining a high, whether, you know, you're just doing sort of like an all burpee double under, you know, uh, box jump over workout. So depending on the workout type, it's high intensity and then fluctuation. So the common things is high intensity and fluctuation. So what's the most important aspect is to track, can a device keep up with high intensity and fluctuation? Can it keep up with those fundamental things? Because that is a device that should be used for CrossFit. That's why chest straps and arm bands are fundamentally important because across the wrist, optical heart rate sensors can't keep up, except for Apple Watch because you just can't keep up with the fluctuation in the intensity, which is the premise and the point of CrossFit, especially when worn on the wrist. So in doing my heart rate accuracy evaluation, I take it measures in three areas and I do it the same for all of it. The average heart rate, but only beats above 100 per minute because everything should keep up with 100 beats per minute and below. All basic devices, cheap devices. So what's the percentage accuracy of heart rate? And a lot of people are, I mean, all watches should be relatively 90s in that range. Secondly, the amount of time it captured you being in the 80 to 100% of your max heart rate. So your peak is your zone four and zone five, your 80 to 100% of your max heart rate. Did it keep up with the intensity and the fluctuations? Did the fluctuations capture time in that area? And then the last and most important is, can, did it keep up with the amount of time in the peak highest zone, the 90 to 100% of max heart rate? So 80 to 100 and the 90 to 100, because that is where the threshold is built. That's where the body is broken. That's where the cardiovascular strain is significant. That's where the recovery will flow from. On my test, I kept it in a clean arm. I like wanted to wash this arm before I went to test. I kept it like nice little band here, perfectly snug, no other devices on there, no hand straps, no anything that might disrupt the beauty and the perfection of this. Conversely, I will typically take an Apple Watch and I hate Apple Watches. I hate it. I hate the form factor. I hate the little apps. I hate everything about it. I put that Apple Watch anywhere on my arm and it just keeps up with the workout. I don't, I don't know how other device manufacturers haven't broken the thing open and copied it, somehow copied it. Ugh, but Apple Watch, totally different. This is the pristine, it's just like no touch, don't mess. It's, you know, C. So with that, let's take a look at how it performed in a workout tonight. Okay, so looking at accuracy, this is the workout for today. A bunch of bench press, not a lot of reps, so the heart rate's not gonna spike and then a four time workout of one round of macho man which is three power cleans three front squats three push jerks and then 50 double unders rotated through and this is how it did on the chest strap 115 beat per minute average 171 um, max out rate you can see the warm-up actually the bench press are the lower spikes and then the warm-up is the higher spike and then the workout itself just continued to escalate from zone top of zone four to the bottom of zone five. And then this is how it looked on the whoop. Now here you can see the 90 and 100. So 80 is 144 beats per minute and the 90 is 162. And on the whoop, you can see that it basically barely crosses 140 beats a minute. Barely just for, just for a little bit, the peak ever I saw, and it was never accurate. Every time, because I, I had to watch it side by side with a large you know, heart rate, graph, heart rate number on the screen, never uh, was within 10 beats per minute. So again, here's the uh, chest strap, 162 beats per minute, 
in the peak zone, 144 in the second zone, and then here's the whoop, just basically not catching the peak at all. And you can see that dip, where it really collapsed in the end there. That was when it was like up in the peakest zone. And even the decline of the graph towards the you know middle of the Metcon, the, the heart rate gets less accurate as the workout gets more intense. And then conversely, Here's a $150 Amazfit GTR3. It was averaging about 158. Obviously, it overpeaked, uh, overspiked on the Metcon, but it was actually, at least a picture wise, a better fit. And then here's the results for the first workout the average heart rate for the, you know, the beats per minute over 100 beats per minute, 73% accurate. Zone five, 0% accurate. Zone four and five, 24% accurate. So in the hardest parts of the workout, hardest parts of the heart rate tracking, the hardest exertion cardiovascularly in tracking CrossFit, complete failure. And then if you take just the averages, I just put different weights to different testing metrics. This would be the initial score for the first test, 20%. That's probably the lowest score I've ever seen on any of the 20 seven devices I've tested. And so you can see this. What's this? This is the Amazfit GTR3 $150 watch in my workout from yesterday where it tracked the Metcon almost continually throughout the actual period of heart rate, ex heart rate exertion. So with that, we got some things to talk about. And so there you have it, folks. First power workout out of the gate. Not accurate, not accurate. If it was based on this test, it would literally get a 20% accuracy. Now, my heart rate zones have gone higher, so it's harder. If it is not keeping up with more intense heart rate because my max heart rate went up just based on a bunch of averages and different testing, so my zones went up. So it's gotta keep up with an even higher threshold zone than it used to in the past on my previous testing. So it's got a tougher bill to follow, but in this first test, it would have got a 20% accuracy. 20% because it just missed all the most intense times. It never broke over 150 beats a minute in a workout where I was like kind of average in 160 plus. I mean, that that's not like all together, but it's just it's just off for tracking. That just it, it means this should automatically be able to connect to a Bluetooth chest strap. If you test something like this and it's that bad when doing a CrossFit workout, it should be like, oh, well, it has to connect to a Bluetooth chest strap because it can't possibly do it on the wrist built into what it is. The other crazy thing is Whoop is only a sensor. It's not a pretty screen. It doesn't have a bunch of widgets or apps. It doesn't tell you anything. It is just a sensor. So why don't they just break open the Apple Watch and copy whatever it is they're doing? Because that just doesn't make sense. Again, here's the Macefit GTR 3. $150, $180, but it came with an $80 set of earbuds. It's doing much better at keeping up with CrossFit workouts. I'm gonna publish the accuracy testing when I finish two more workouts, so probably in a couple of days. It's doing much better than the fancy Whoop device with the all new sensor that they're proud to announce. So going forward, what do the reviews look like going forward? I'm gonna test it for accuracy on the wrist, on the forearm, and on the bicep. I'm gonna use the bicep band. And then I'm just gonna tell my general thoughts in a full review after that. So we're gonna test it in those different ways so you can have some full gauge of how to get the most out of it. And then maybe in the future, I'll test it wearing underwear or something like that and one of those new things. Um, but you know, the, the point, it, if it fails three tests, I don't test it any longer. So if it continues, if it gets below 50% uh, accuracy in three workouts in a row, it, the testing is over because it's just it's just not accurate. It's got to be in the ballpark of 70 plus for it to even be worthwhile to continue to look higher at accuracy. So that's what's going to happen over the next few weeks. Obviously, I have all these other reviews out. I just wanted to share these thoughts immediately because I'm super fired up about it. And a lot of us have been hanging and there's been so many negative reports about accuracy as well as all these issues. I wanted to address the issues and address the accuracy. So with that, that is the initial review, initial sort of testing and update to the issues on the Whoop 4.0. It's a figure hunter. Thanks so much for watching.